I've been working on the exceptional company research for a number of years with, uh, with uh, a number of different colleagues at Deloitte, most notably Mumtaz Ahmed, who is the Chief Strategy Officer uh, of Deloitte. And it was really a project that was born of a desire to really understand whether all of the effort that had gone into trying to uh, figure out what the drivers of long-term success were all about uh, were actually looking at companies that were demonstrably superior. We had a hunch that some of the companies that were being examined really hadn't delivered the performance that the, uh, that, that the various researchers said they were. The concern that we had is that very often when you go out looking for great companies, companies that have delivered supposedly exceptional performance, in fact what you run the risk of doing is just looking at the ones that have gotten lucky. And it gets very difficult to tell the difference on the basis of performance alone, which have delivered their, uh, their results as a consequence of actions that they have taken and which have simply caught a string of lucky breaks. To try and sort that out, we developed, uh, along with Andy Henderson, a professor at uh, University of Texas in Austin, uh, a statistical method for actually determining whether a company's performance was good enough for long enough to defend the proposition that something special was actually going on. And there are three categories of companies that we looked at. Miracle workers, as you point out, those are companies that deliver exceptionally high performance for an exceptionally long period of time. We have what we call long runners, companies that have delivered a slightly less impressive level of performance, but for a slightly longer period of time. And then the average Joes that you point out are the companies that deliver average levels of performance for average lengths of time with average levels of volatility. And so that gives us uh, three different pairwise comparisons, and then the hope is that we can begin to discern what the behavioral differences are that, uh, that explain those differences in performance. Like all, like all good literary works, we've decided that there are three underlying principles. We call them the three rules. And in fact, uh, we're, uh, we're working on a book that will be released in, uh, in May uh, of next year, of 2013, called The Three Rules, How Exceptional Companies Beat the Odds. And uh, so those three rules, uh, drum roll please, are uh, better before cheaper, revenue before cost, and there are no other rules. So better before cheaper is a way we think about how exceptional companies generate value for their customers. So the idea here is that rather than competing on price, uh, delivering uh, price value to customers in the form of low priced products or services, uh, exceptional companies systematically compete on the basis of non-price value, so they deliver really all the other dimensions of value that customers care about, uh, and they charge more for it. Our second rule is revenue before cost, and the second rule speaks not to how companies generate value for customers, but how they capture value for themselves. And so what we find is that exceptional companies drive superior profitability through increased revenue, either higher unit price or higher unit volume, rather than systematically lower costs. So part of the reason we've been at this for so long, we, we began work on this project back in 2007, is that it really has been quite a voyage of discovery. We started out looking at many of these other types of attributes. We were looking at leadership, we were looking at organizational structure, we were looking at M&A strategy, we were looking at diversification, geographic expansion, all of these different attributes um, that we thought might ac actually be key determinants, key ex um, uh, explanatory variables when it came to accounting for superior performance. But we couldn't find any systematic patterns with respect to any of them. Now that's not to say those things don't matter. They absolutely do matter, but they don't appear to matter in any systematic way. The only rules that came out were the three that we discussed, better before cheaper, revenue before cost, and that third rule, there are no other rules, well that's our tip of the hat to the fact that all these other things that we know matter seem to matter in highly idiosyncratic, context-dependent, contingent sorts of ways.